you watched the last video, we were preparing to make some hay in November. It's been down now several days. Carl says it wasn't ready, so he went out and tedded again this morning. And now we're checking to see if it's finally time. Got some hay to go out. We're making room for it. Huh? So this is the wonders of late season hay. There is no warm temperatures. It's been in the 40s and 50s. There's not a bunch of sunlight, not a bunch of direct sunlight. Ground moisture is not fully dry. It kind of, once you get a rain, the ground never really dries out after November. And uh, so we're, we're, we're working with about nothing here. That's got some crunch to it. It's just goofy feeling because it's cold. Feels strange. Oh, we're looking for stem moisture here. There's still a little bit in the alfalfa stems. Feel that puppy. You bite it, you can get some juice out of it. Yep. Carl's doing the old nail trick. You scrape the stem and then you get some leftover on your nail. That's usually a sign of still some juice on it. We made the executive decision we're going to have Carl rake at least half of this. We have maybe 50 acres down, but it's just really light. It's, it's not that big of a deal. 50 acres sounds worse than it is. Carl is going to go ahead and rake it. We're going to give it a little bit of time in his breeze, and we're going to try to bale some of it. Now it's getting the alvine blown off, and now we're going to see Carl probably harass just a little bit here. There's a little bit of stem moisture here and there. Is there? A little bit. Not too bad. I would think it might dry in the windrow, yeah. We're ready to get like an hour of bailing in or something. We've been waiting on the semi for a couple hours since he finally showed up. We we're all set. So we'll get him loaded up, then we'll film Carl raking, and then we'll see if we can bail a little bit. Can you help me strap this load, old Dusty? I guess. Take me away from my jabber. I know. That's not the type of job you want to like go back to either. Not really, no. Our trusty straps, pre-cut, ready to go. You want a load or strap? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, Seth, you got six in here? Don't mind if I do, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. That's how I know something you got in So this is how we strap these when we're going uh, bundles, I guess you'd call them flat. We do six bundles at a time strapped. So we bundle around two sections. And it's pretty easy when we're doing them this way. When they're upright, it's a little bit harder, but we just, we mark the centers, find the string back there, so even on both sides, put it through string over here, maybe go through an individual bale string just to hold the height, and we're all good. Good. We just walked this baby in. No big deal. That should show you guys about enough. We'll get this loaded up and then we'll check out Carl Reagan. Gotta get, we have to get the customary Facebook picture. That is the fourth, third truck today. There's gonna be five total. Slid it in, 7.56. Look at that, beautiful. I'll get the BOL and then you wanna check the windrows with your windrow tester? Yeah. Cool. Justin is skeptical of the November drying. Mm -hmm. It's all right. We just have this cool windrow tester that we never use, so it's time to use it. Passing side, suicide. Wow. This guy's got some pretty serious bumper stickers. Man, it's true though. Looks like he's raking like two and a half together or something to get something feasible. Carl's got a handle. I don't know what he's doing. He's taking it over. Actually, I'm not sure. He doesn't appear to be doing much of anything there. This just looks like lawn clippings. Feels pretty dry to me. So Justin's got his fancy windrow tester. What do we got to stop that bucket? Yeah. Feels pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Good through it through. The ground is still damp. Put your finger right through, right in the mud. Here's that. 
packed right in. 14, 14 nine. nine or five? Nine. I think. Nine. nine? I think so. Try it again. I see, he was making room so he could go back around the same way and make like, uh, put four together. The moment of truth. Seems a little tough. Push in like that. Twenty four point four. That ain't what you want. Here's trial number three in a different spot. What was your guess while it's running? Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Twenty four point four. That's the same reading as before. Yeah. I'd want to put it in kickers tomorrow then, I think. Twenty-two. Yeah, so Justin and I made the executive decision we're gonna have Carl make wind rows overnight because we'd want the least amount of hay touching the ground because we think we're grabbing a lot of ground moisture. And if we have to dump them over tomorrow before we bail, we will, but this will be better for it. Oh, we'll turn Carl loose. He's doing a great job. Carl's best to rate. That's a nice straight row. Yeah, <laughs> He's doing a real nice job. I think in a perfect world, you'd have that front curtain pick it up. But I don't think it cares too much. I mean, there is hay in spots. That's an okay windrow. That's a shadow caster, you can see. There is. All right, Pops, what's today's date? I don't know, but it's late. <laughs> it's November 16th. Look, I, I find the late latest I've ever been hold. Looks like long clippings, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just beautiful. Not the biggest windrows, but they'll make something. You get about an inch diameter of the twist test, just twist it a couple times, and if it breaks in one or two tests, they're usually pretty good. But you gotta do that in a couple spots. You can, you can hear the crunch, which is nice. The deceptive thing about this time of year is the hay is not warm, so it, it, it just feels different. It feels cold, but all the normal uh, metrics that we go by feel pretty good, so. Feels better than some of the stuff when we had the high humidity in the summer. Yeah, it does. So we'll bail a couple and broke them and uh, see how it works. You gotta just run. We don't want to mess around with this late season stuff, so we're gonna be putting our silo cake dry hay formula on it. Make sure it's turned on, look like you fight up after a while. Yep, it's good. I'm also in a t-shirt and I don't feel that cold. The past several days of drying wasn't this warm, but today's a really nice day. There's actually like a fire warning right now because the humidity is so low and the atmosphere is dry and everything, which is unusual for our area. So these are small wind roads. We're gonna be bailing. Golly, I can't even keep up. He's probably going like seven and a half miles an hour or something. These previous bales have been in the chamber now for, I guess, over a month. And they're not rotten, so that means that hay was dry. My guess is gonna be about 14. What is that? That's 12, 11, 15. It only hit like 15. 14. Close enough. Why? I'd say we're pretty good. Leave it at point three. Yeah, I would. We like it. We've got the thumbs up. My dad and I are not fighting about the moisture. We're both on board. We also don't have another chance. I mean, tomorrow it's going to rain, and I, that's that's totally it for the season. So, this is the last hurrah. We got Carl running. Mike, who you guys have not seen a lot, he's our newest employee, he's running. And my dad running the other baler. They are running fast, they're hammering down. 
I'm sure Rob will be here any second with the Baron. I'm not gonna fight him. I'll throw the drone up in the air. Get some last of the season drone footage on this beautiful day. The fields are green, bright blue sunshine. We're not quite in God's country. That's a little bit more in Western Ohio, but we're, we're right up there at the pearly gates, that's for sure. Looks like we're only gonna run three today. That should be fine. They're whipping right across those. We probably wouldn't have done this at all if the balers were blown off and in the barn. But I'm happy that we're doing it. I'd like to make at least a semi-load and it'll be it'll be a worthwhile couple hour venture. We're at point three, BJ. They're shooting along pretty fast. Come on, where's the Baron? I heard it. Why? Because I'll catch six guys like no. You ain't gonna catch four balers. There's only four up. Blew apart on you, huh? Oh man. This part of the farm over here used to just be a, a little grass field and we stripped a lot of this clay. Well, we stripped the topsoil, put it in a pile, got down to the clay and made the base for the new barn. And now this is just kind of a, a staging parking lot. It actually stays fairly dry. I don't know if that's the long-term plan for that area, but we did sort of need it. We just get bound up here in the driveway. I couldn't figure out why I felt so like make it out of place it's because i did have my sunglasses on so now i feel much better i'm ready to get after it confident in front of the camera let's chase robbie around and see a baron being made for those of you who are new to the channel that is a male that grabs 21 bales at a time ties four strings around it and you have a nice consolidated package that we can machine handle that fits in box bands and transports very well customers love it and we love it Now folks, that is a nice bundle of light alfalfa grass mix. Holy cow. If we can make some barn fulls of that every year, a farming could be not such a poor man's sport, I guess. Wow, that is some nice product. 11, it's even too dry. 12, so beautiful. It's heavy grass, you can hardly see alfalfa. And that's the whole reason we cut this is because the whole home farm is getting a little old. It's, it's definitely a dying alfalfa stand, but the orchard in Timothy is still very strong. The guys are wrapping up. I don't even think they bailed for a full hour. We ended up getting Jake. I forget he comes in after school, so he wasn't here to begin with. He's in the fifth baler. So we're doing the five baler dance again for, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be even a thousand bales. It wasn't too much. But it's a nice send off. Everyone's happy. We're smiling. It's sunny. We'll get these balers blowed off, put away. We'll get the rebaling set up, set up going, and we will get hunkered down and prepared for winter 2023, 2024. Does winter take the name of the the previous year or you know what I'm trying to say it'll be 2024 soon enough look at my dad smiling ear to ear just a big grin that man loves making hay nice so for any of you producers that are considering these double balers coming out, have you guys heard anything? And if you haven't heard anything, if you don't even know what a double baler is, it's supposed to be basically two and a half to three times the capacity of our single small square baler. So they're dual chambers, they're nearly the size of a large three by three large square baler, 
and they just pump out two bales out of two chambers at a time. And some of the preliminary preliminary tests are like unbelievable numbers of output per hour, like north of eight, 900 bales an hour, which is pretty awesome. We decided to hold off one more year because it sounds like double balers are coming down the pipeline for the beginning of the 2025 season. So we're hoping we can just sit on these balers another year and then maybe make an upgrade to that, some type of switch. But that is exciting news for us. Is that the most baling you, you've done all year? Yeah. What do you call that production? That's the first time you've ever start to finish bale. Yes. Ever. Yep. <laughs> For how long? 20 minutes? I don't even know if it was. It was not an hour. I don't, I don't think. What time will we start? My dad was all worried we weren't going to get done. I know. He, was, <laughs> he just likes getting stuff done. He likes going. I think it's kind of dried out. Mm -hmm. You got to. I was. I didn't even think quite a thousand bales. You don't think? I don't think. Close. Not it's not the bailers need to go for an hour. So I guess we'll clean her up and put the two youngins on cleanup crew or what? Yep. All right. Yeah, it's probably good enough to drive out there. Yeah, yeah. Consolidate then go. Yeah. Ooh, probably. I was talking to Justin, then we heard a boom. Looks like the old man sheared him in. Wait, you must have caught something? You can't plug on these rows. All right, well, see, the only way to do this is get in there and pull some out, so no sense filming it, but we'll check back in in a second. You want to explain how a shear pin works, Dad, to people that don't really understand? Well, the main flywheel has a shear pin in it. This is the main flywheel. Yep. And it has a shear pin in case something gets in the front of that, but puts the hand packs it into the Yep. Right, so it's the first line of defense. Yeah. Yep. So this just starts freewheeling because it's not connected to your PTO anymore once you shear the bin and it saves the baler from breaking. How do you guys feel about the end of hay season? I'm all right. <laughs> what about you, Jericho? Fine. You sad? No. It's kind of a sad day. You don't care, do you? Selling corn. You got a crew for next year? I do. Wow. Yep. Three, kids. Yeah, three kids. Are they half as good as you? We're going back to uh, kick your wagon. Oh boy. Oh, that's <laughs> not me. I'll definitely get some. We didn't mean to cut the bailing day short, but my mom and I had other plans today. We have got BK and his crew fixed. So instead of the e-collar or whatever it's called, little Whitey, who's a female, gets, what do they call it, a bodysuit? And they are just getting home from the vet. They're a bit loopy, bit hungry, bit confused. We're gonna try to keep them in this the dirty partial office here for a day or two while we regain their trust. Oh, you feel all right, BK? <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in. That's a nice. We kind of have a twofold story going on. That's the end of hay season, and it is the end of BK's nuts. So. <laughs> See you guys.